Okay, welcome back to I think the third video on uh, creating this project team management app. Uh, in the last video, we set up this screen that you see here. It's the gallery screen, and um, since then, what I've done just in the meantime is label some of my uh, items here a bit nicer than what I had, uh, so that we can maybe you know, I'll be glad of it when I'm we start kind of using some more data driven. Um, methods here. So just to go through, I've just la labeled like these things across the top. I've named label last modified header, and I'm just going to click through these in case you want to pause and keep yours exactly the way mine is. Um, label name header is that item up there. Uh, label header is just that purple, whole purple bar at the top that I put in that has the name in it. And then we've got our gallery, and here's all the items in our gallery. And this is something we didn't really talk too much about, but the tree view kind of lets you know, here's my screen, here's items that are sitting on my screen, here's my gallery, here's items that are actually in my gallery. So I'll label that icon, that little arrow out there, I call it icon arrow. Uh, the image of me, or the user's image, this is image user peak, label modified, label comments, label project. Rectangle spacer, rect spacer is just what I've called this thing here that runs along the bottom to, to um, space out my different items and label username. So in this video, what we're going to do is create a search bar that will, our search box, that'll let me search through all the different, let's say, uh, project items I've got here. I just added a few extra in SharePoint just so that I'll have a list of stuff to actually search through to demonstrate. Anyway, to begin with our search box, I'm going to add in a new input and it's going to be a text input because it's somewhere, and I've made a slight mistake there because I actually entered it in on the gallery. That's why I came up on everything. I just want this at the top of the screen. So um, it's gonna be something where a user can type in and get back some, uh, do some searching. So I've just added that text input. And now I'm gonna get rid of kind of the default text that's in there, that text input. I just wanna be blank once, once it starts up. And maybe we could even add a label beside it that tells us it's a search bar. So let's put in a label and let's put in the word search in here. And that should kind of help with make things clear as to what's going on. And um, I'm going to just make my border just the same color as everything else, keep everything kind of neat. And I'm going to take off the border radius. Border radius is what gives it those round edges. Um, I don't know, I just like sharper edges so instead of five i'm going to put in a zero and it gives us that kind of sharp edge so my search bar i'm going to go to well actually in even though this is where let's say i'll be doing my searching and typing in stuff in there i put the code that drives the search bar and the filter on my gallery here and also one other thing is right now my gallery is displaying information directly from my SharePoint, which isn't ideal because let's say when every time I do a call then, or let's say search or press something, my app will make a call to SharePoint. And it can just be quite taxing on the app. So what I'm gonna do first is use a collection. So I'm gonna to go to my app on start. And I'm gonna do a clear collect. And I'm just gonna call this call and I'm going to call it project management. So I'm going to keep it very similar to what we have, project management list. Right now, uh, we, we, we're using SharePoint list called project management list. I'm just going to call this call project management list, which is just going to collect my project management list from SharePoint when the app starts. So right now I'm in the app and I'm in the app on start event, which means when the app kicks off, it's gonna gather up all this information and make a collection that, that'll live inside the app. So it doesn't have to call outside the app. So it'll be a little bit of a strain on it at first, to gather up all the information, but then as you use the app, it doesn't have to make any calls outside of itself. So she runs smoother. It also helps with some of the search items, you get less delegation issues. So now I'm ready, I'm gonna go back to here where I've got my project management list. Unfortunately, I'm gonna get rid of that because I no longer want to draw this straight from my SharePoint. I'm gonna draw from that collection we just made. So just to be clear, I'm clicking on my gallery 
and I'm on the items um, element of the gallery and I've just deleted everything. But what we're going to now present is the call project management list and it should work the very same way. Um, and let's see, I'm going to hit a run on start and let's see if we can get this to run. So let's go to my app and run on start. That will kind of gather the information up as it's coming in and there we have it. So run on start will do that kick off that on start event, in this case creating that collection. And we can see it's no different now than what it was running straight off SharePoint. So now let's put in our search bar element. So when we search and when we type something in here, we want to filter our collection based on what we search, based on what we type in. So I'm going to filter my collection based on my, and actually what I'm going to do now is keep on top of my labeling here. I'm going to call this uh, rename. The label beside my search bar, I'm going to call label search. And my actual search bar, I'm going to call it um, rename txt search bar. And here's where it's getting clear of why you need to kind of keep on top of, let's say, labeling things correctly, is because now that I'm at the point where I want to use some elements in my code, I don't want to be using like text box underscore one underscore a or something like that. I want it to be clear and easy to grab. So I've got filter my call project management list. And I want to filter it by that search bar. So txt search bar is what we call it. So txt search bar. And I'm going to look up the text. So search bar dot text. And where that's in the different elements of my list. So where my search bar dot text is in my username, which is like, let's say the employee, I think we call it, is in employee. And we're going to need the dot display name, because if you remember that employee field in SharePoint is actually a people picker. So it has like your display name, your email, it comes with your picture and things, it has a whole lot of information. So I'm going to specify that. I want to search by, let's say, just my employee name. Let's see what happens with just that much. So now as my, I'm gonna close my bracket and uh, let's just see. So now I should be able to search by employee name. So if I search just for, let's say Brad down there, once I put in a B, that's all I get is Brad, perfect. And if I wanted me, there we go. So this is working really nicely. So now let's add in, I might want to search by my project, I might want to search by my comments. So let's try that. Let's add in those extra elements. So uh, if it's in my display name, let's put in an R if my TXT search bar is in my project. And actually I want search bar dot text is in my project or TXT search bar Let's even do the comments. Search bar dot text in comments. And the the in is useful because it's checking is this anywhere in there. It doesn't have to be an exact match or anything. So now if we let's say look for a project uh, this one, where I'm making a model-driven app. So I want to look up all the items that have a model-driven app in the name. Perfect. Okay. Um, each These three have the word this in them. Uh, that last one doesn't. So if I search this, hopefully I should only get those three. And as you can see, my search bar now is filtering nicely. So I can filter by any of these fields, which is great. So that's where we're going to leave off to this video. We've now got our search bar. And in the next video, we're going to put together how to create a new item. So how we're going to actually create a new one of these without having to go to SharePoint. So far, I've been having to kind of put them into SharePoint myself. But let's, we're going to create a new screen where we can actually input a new um, person and their project ourselves. Mm -hmm.